The Six Principles of Classical Portrait Painting The purpose of creating this PowerPoint is to share with you the six principles of classical painting that so often are found lacking in untrained fine art painting. In the creation of this work I am delighted to be able to introduce images and commentary by Scott Fletcher, art restorer, artist and without doubt one of the most accomplished fine art painters I have had the privilege to work with over the years. I will upload these in the next PowerPoint with his commentaries. Scott and I are presently creating a video on process and technique which will be posted shortly. Signature Principle number one Replacing our experiences of reality either through figurative representation or haptic abstraction is a dialogue created using mark making, scale, geometry, symbolism, colour, tone, texture and composition. Each gesture or mark made by the artist should endeavour to communicate a response to an experience that is deemed worthy of sharing with an audience. Its aim should be to create thought and dialogue. Your work should be similar to any interaction experienced in life. If you choose to represent a dialogue for looking at something, then that should endeavour to show what others miss when looking at it. Important note, fine art is not representative colouring in. Concept, principle number two. I once made the mistake to spend an hour of my life watching a film about a washing machine filmed through its entire washing cycle. Not, oh, uh, no other content or deeper meaning other than to record a social activity which represented 20th century reality. Many fine artists create images with the aim to demonstrate their mastery, or not, in replicating life. We don't remember and acknowledge film, poem or book just for the composition alone. That is just one part of a collection of processes leading to the artist's message from the work. Without understanding what you are trying to communicate, you will not be able to consider what will be the most appropriate process to create your image. Important note, Rembrandt Harmsoon did not paint so many self-portraits because he liked looking in the mirror. Rather, they were trials in developing dialogue on anatomy and expression through mark making. Take time to visit galleries and take in from direct experience how the fine artists you admire have achieved the message they set out to create. Compositional narratives and geometry, principle number three. The natural world is all mathematics. Golden ratios, spirals, balancing motifs, it's everywhere. When an artist we need to do is understand how we are all interconnected and emotionally similar to make any communication we present accessible and relevant to an audience. Thinking critically about your intentions will function your arrangement decisions and for that to be effective you will need to observe life and its interaction with its surroundings. Important note, Leonardo de Sapiero would daily make notes and observations, his surroundings and people and their interactions with it. Materials, principle number four. 
Far too many times, especially in schools and amateur art groups, we will you see materials used mistaken as just a colouring in function. There is a reason materials differ from each other, and rarely do we see them used appropriately by the untrained. Take time to understand how differing materials can be used appropriately and effectively. We don't put diesel in a petrol car, but for many, paint is not recognised for purpose and is used without its designed functions. Take the time to discover how paint works and keep a record of potential range. Important note, Tiziano Vasilio mastered so many material processes. Visit a gallery and spend a day taking in his skills. Layers, principle number five. Works of art should allow the viewer to follow the journey of recorded observations and have depth to them. Building on grisaille, glazes or scumbled layers creates a depth of field that simulates our surrounding reality and creates integrity. It also allows values of tone that are impossible to create with a single layer of paint as the surface is not physically but optically mixing the colors. Experiment with supplement materials such as glaze mediums or oils such as refined linseed oil. Important note, Johannes Vermeer was a master of glazing. Take a look if you nearest art gallery has one. Colour, tonal value and brushwork. Principle number six. <clears throat> Depth of field is the hardest skill to master. It requires a detailed understanding of how light and colour are picked up by the eyes. <coughs> but more importantly, how an artist will use colour values and shade to increase the illusion of depth on a flat surface. When visiting art galleries, I have been asked by my students how master artists are able to create so much depth. Essentially, cold values should be added to backgrounds, natural values added to the middle distance, and warm tones added to the foreground. Important note, Thomas Gainsborough painted the blue boy to show his critics what an amazing colourist he was. jean Honoric Dominique Angre created amazing depths of field. Conclusion. The six principles written about here are the most important ways of understanding what visual knowledge artists use to present their narratives. Technical maturity and advanced skills bring with them maturity and depth not found in less learned art. Please go out and research these principles and you will see advanced personal skills bringing you great reward and creative satisfaction. <coughs>